crowd still has to grow. Uh, we're still not. Uh, I mean, we, we, we do not, not we do not have everyone who should be here with us already here. But it's good that we stick to the time, at least to start, uh, so that we. I mean, we, we all plan to be here at the same time, right? Uh, there are times in which the collective uh, collective efforts or, or the collective intelligence has to be generated in a synchronous way, and a classroom is like that, right? And there is, of course, a lot of uh, uh, times where we individually uh, try to acquire knowledge that we, we then uh, can share later on. So um, I hope that you understand that the way that we are doing here, in which you read some material before class, and then we have our class, and then we, we have our forum in which we discuss the topics that uh, I mean that we read about and that we, we heard a lecture about, is a way of sharing, or is a way of, in fact, even not sharing, building collective intelligence. Right? Uh, from the chapters that you read for today, which were uh, Surviecki's uh, uh, chapters 2 to 6, which is uh, uh, a large part of the of the, 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 of the book, right, from page 23 to 142, you, you get a, a lot of examples in which when uh, thinking of uh, the, the wisdom of crowds, uh, the author argues that it's actually generated uh, many times in a very individual way. Uh, in fact, remember that one of the main issues here with respect to the wisdom of crowds is that individuals have to be independent on their own individual um, creation of of knowledge or information gathering or whatever. Uh, in fact, when we start relying on teams or groups uh, where everyone has the same same information, uh, we also have the same bias, and and then we do not get the benefits of uh, of the wisdom of, of, of the crowds because uh, in fact we have that impression that we want, that that we collectively are getting more than individually, but we are only uh, getting to reinforce ideas that were already preconceived ideas uh, in that group. In fact, I'm not sure if you were familiar with the term group thinking, right, that is used by the author here. Uh, it may be a dangerous term for those of us who are not native speakers of English, uh, because we may think that group thinking refers to thinking that happens in a group, and that's not the case. Group thinking is an expression that is used uh, to refer to a group that uh, performs as a herd, as, a, as one single individual. Uh, so it ends up that group thinking is not a good thing. Right? Group, think, group thinking makes a group believe that a decision is being made collectively, when in fact uh, it, it has uh, all the biases of either a group that is too homogeneous, uh, where everyone already thinks the same, uh, and then you have the reinforcements of that, you may remember that in the, in, in, I think in chapter two or three, uh, the author discusses uh, a very important strategic decision that was taken by the American government during Kennedy's time that was invading Cuba. And uh, in fact, it seemed to the group that took that decision, it seemed to be, to be a great idea. And in fact, it was a great failure. And uh, analyzing why uh, that was a failure later on, uh, it was, um, Notice that, in fact, that group was uh, uh, was a victim of group thinking. Everyone there, I mean, it was a group of specialists that all had, let's say, the same perspective, the same view, the same uh, cognition uh, with respect to, to the problem, to the challenge that was invading uh, Cuba. Uh, they all had the same uh, ideas about it. So uh, when they discussed it, there, were, there was either consensus, either it was really a situation of consensus, or that they may have also had uh, another kind of problem that is sometimes even an individual is not in full agreement with the rest of the group, but when he or she noticed that he's completely outnumbered, uh, that person starts thinking, well, I may be wrong, right? And then, and, and, and that person doesn't even um, say anything against it. Uh, so, so that person doesn't help the group uh, calling its own attention to the fact that the idea is not so unanimous as, as one originally thought, because that person thinks, well, I may, maybe I'm missing something here. It's a group of very smart people. I'm not going to show that I'm the, the dumb people here that disagrees with the, with the, re the remaining. You know? So it's not that the, the group didn't want to get to a, a discussed idea. It's simply because discussion doesn't happen uh, in some situations uh, due to, you know, 
um, either the feeling that there is almost uh, that, that, that the decision is already al almost consensual, uh, and then um, and, and, and even if you're part of that group and, and you feel that you, you think a little differently, you may be quiet. So, so someone is quiet, uh, quietened by by a, a, an idea an idea that seems already to be more to, to seem prevalent, uh, and there are other uh, issues with, uh, with mainly with small groups. Uh, in fact, the author here defends that idea that the wisdom of crowds really needs a crowd because in, in smaller groups, well, crowds uh, 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 tend to be free of bias uh, in the sense that, well, it will be completely biased. The, the, the individuals will all be biased, but their biases are going to be canceled out. In small groups, that may not happen due to several uh, characteristics that are discussed in some of the chapters that we, we will discuss today. So there is this feeling of consensus, there is the um, uh, information cascading, uh, um, which uh, means that if, an information, if some information starts arriving uh, at the beginning, it arrives before other information, and it gets already some traction, then it's difficult to move in a different direction afterwards. Okay. Um, so um, we we will uh, uh, focus our discussion in, in, in sort of Yaki here in, in these chapters two to six, and then uh, after the break we will do our discussion in the forum. And as I did uh, in previous weeks, I did not delete the participations of people from last year. I used to do that in the past, so uh, I wish now that I had discussions from people, you know, for, for the many years that this course has already been taught. But it was something that I only thought this time. I mean, this is also collective intelligence, right? When we are able to discuss a matter with people that thought, thought about it in a different moment. Of course, those people are not going to be here engaging with us in this discussion, but we can engage with their ideas and we can comment or provide feedback to what they said and, and, and that may be uh, uh, important uh, for other people in our group uh, now. Okay? So this is what we'll do. And I also left here a, a link to Futur. Uh, I don't know how, exactly how they, 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 they pronounce that. Uh, but it's a, a website in which we can organize uh, polls uh, and, uh, and in fact uh, we can either organize polls and then invite people to, to take part in it uh, or we can simply participate on polls that have already been included there uh, and then when those situations are resolved you get the answers uh, in fact about uh, uh, I think it was uh, well late, late last year I got a lot of uh, answers about polls that I had participated maybe at the beginning of last year, for example, with respect to elections in Brazil, and they were, uh, and, and who would win the election, and, and, and a, a lot, lot of things. I, I didn't even remember that I had participated in those polls, and then suddenly I started receiving the results of uh, those polls, and, and, and my predictions, and, and, and compared to everyone's predictions, and the, let's say, the, the ability of the group to, to, to make strong decisions. So it's worth uh, checking. Uh, it uses, it definitely, uh, is a website that is based on the principles of wisdom of crowds. All right. Um, okay. So um, let's start uh, with uh, chapter two. Um, uh, the author uh, starts uh, chapter two talking a little bit about the car industry in the late 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s. Right? We are all very familiar with what happens uh, with automobile during during the, the sorry the the, 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 the 1900s and the and the, the 2000 and sorry no, the 1800s and the 1900s so we are we are all very familiar with what what happened uh, during the 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 the, the 1900s uh, which I mean the, the 20th century uh, where I mean the we all think well where, where did where did uh, this industry start we all think of Ford for whatever reason uh, because Ford was the first company that really uh, uh, took mass production or it was, was the company that took mass production to, to uh, uh, an extent that it, it made Ford uh, almost like a monopolist for, for well, how can I tell, how, how can I say that, he, uh, that Ford was a monopolist when there were some, uh, I don't know, more than a hundred, uh, let's say during the, the, during the World War I, uh, the author claims that there were more than a hundred uh, automobile makers, so it was not, but let's say Ford was very prevalent. Uh, but Ford was far from a, Ford became preva prevalent because it chose, let's say, uh, the, the decisions that Ford took uh, were were decisions that made Ford's cars uh, 
accepted by the market. Right? So you, you have to have, at one end you have the, the inventor or the innovator. Uh, inventors and innovators are different, right? Uh, the inventor thinks of, uh, the inventor is usually someone who, who thinks of uh, something that is completely new but that has, has an idea. But the innovator is the one that implements in the market. I innovation always relates to making sure that an inventor's idea or, or, or whatever new idea is, uh, uh, is brought to the market and in fact gets traction, so, so gets, uh, gets many, many users. Uh, uh, and uh, so let's say um, Ford was probably one of these uh, innovators because it, changed, uh, it, it produced a car that was cheap enough for a lot of people to buy. Uh, in fact, he had this dream that each one of uh, his uh, workers in the manufacturing plant were able to buy a car, one of his cars, right? So that was, uh, that, that, that was what would make uh, Ford happy at the end of the day. Uh, not because he was uh, that, that, that gentle and that uh, altruistic uh, that he wanted his, you know, the, the good for all his workers, or maybe he did, I don't know, but mainly because he thought, well, if, if all my workers can buy it, it means that thousands of other people around the United States and the world will be able to, to, to buy uh, the car as well and, it, and that will make it a, su a success considering that it was not a customized or a personalized item that he was producing. He wanted to produce in great in large scales. Right? Uh, but uh, Ford was far from being the, the, the first uh, uh, innovator in the field or, or, or at least the first one to, if, if we define an innovator as someone who brings a new idea and uh, makes it uh, work on the market, uh, then maybe he was one of the first ones. But before Ford, there were hundreds of other automakers trying to develop their ideas uh, and turn them into a profitable product. Uh, at the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s, some uh, uh, inventors uh, or some uh, car manufacturers were trying to, to build uh, steam automobiles. And the reason why, why they thought of a steam automobile was, well, if, 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 if the steam engine is powerful enough to, pull, to, 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 to push a, a train or a boat, why isn't that kind of engine that has already been developed for those purposes, why can't we use it also for cars? So there were people that were trying uh, new car, uh, to, to develop cars using uh, steam, uh, a steam engine. Well, people like Edison, for obvious reasons, wanted an electric car, and they were also pushing. In fact, at the beginning of the, the, the 20th century, uh, uh, a percentage of, of cars were electric. Curious, isn't it? I mean, we, we think this, this, uh, this is a, uh, a situation that we are getting back to uh, more than 100 years later, but at the beginning, that was also uh, a possibility, and there were companies that were trying with electric motors. Uh, and then there were uh, companies that were trying um, a gasoline motor. Uh, motor. Uh, it turned out that the, the gasoline uh, motor won the battle and uh, those companies that had chosen to develop cars based on, uh, 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 based on a, a gasoline motor were the ones that, su that succeeded. But did they know that that would happen? No. I mean, Thomas Edison was probably the most brilliant uh, inventor we've had, ever had or it's, it's a symbol of inventor and innovator because in many fields uh, uh, in electricity, for example, uh, he was definitely an innovator. In car, in car manufacturing, he was probably just an inventor because he was not able to push that into the next level of becoming the product that uh, the markets embraced. Why did that happen? A lot of, uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, one of uh, them was possibly because uh, the electric batteries that they, they, they were able to build back then only allowed it for a very little autonomy in terms of uh, distance that the car could, uh, could go. And that means that uh, the car, uh, well, uh, that, that they, they would need to have an infrastructure of, uh, of uh, stations where cars would be recharged. That was probably much more expensive and, and, and an infrastructure that had to be built alongside with the, with the car industry. Well, Edson was very, let's say, knowledgeable about how to build infrastructures. After all, he had been uh, involved in, 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 the, in building the infrastructure, electricity infrastructure. Although, again, Edison uh, was more like a, of an inventor than an innovator in terms of, uh, of the infrastructure of electricity also, because his uh, proposals for, for the distribution of electricity in the city 
uh, was based on uh, direct currents, uh, not, not alternate currents, uh, which proved not proved to be a, 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 a worse system, but proved to be the one that was not cho chosen. So wh what I'm trying to say here is uh, uh, the, the markets, has, we end up choosing a technology among several alternatives that are being offered. So the innovator is that one that captures the, let's say, the, 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 the interests of the markets and, and that is able to provide this market with the products that fulfills those requirements or those needs or those wishes of, of the market. And of course, I'm talking about the markets. It seems that it's only, it is only the, the, those that will, the consumers that have a say, but it's not only the consumers. There is sometimes there are governments that have to, let's say, put the infrastructure uh, sometimes there are other uh, issues that, that, that there could be even development uh, or design issues involved. By the way, the, the, I said that the, the, the electric cars had this problem that they needed to be re recharged, let's say their bat batteries needed to re be recharged uh, very often, that was not practical. Uh, and the problem with the steam engine cars was that they had to have water boiling before they could move, uh, push, uh, move their cars. Right? It sort of reminds me of what ha happened in the in the 1980s here in Brazil, when we, we had alcohol cars in winter, that we had to go there to the car, turn it on, and leave it uh, going for about 10 or 15 minutes before we could uh, start driving, right? So I remember that my, my, my father used to go there, turn the car on, and then we, we went to have breakfast, and then we could, uh, he could take us to, to school. And, uh, so, uh, but think that the, 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 the steam engine was even worse. I mean, if you had, have you, a large container of water, you had to have that boiling to have the pressure before you could start moving a piston based on that. So again, there was a problem. It, it was a, a, a design problem. Well, it was not a design problem. The, the, the car works, but it was an inconvenience that was generated to the consumers based on a design characteristic of that technology. While, of course, a combustion uh, engine uh, based on, on, on petrol, on, on gasoline, uh, you just turn it on and uh, it starts burning uh, gasoline and the machine goes. So, uh, well, the discussion that the author wants to, 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 the argument that the author wants to make here is that you need a lot of losers, a lot of inventors that are very clever, very intelligent, each one of them trying their own ideas, enthusiastic about their, their ideas, uh, so that they try and develop them before the market can choose among all those alternatives. Right? So, it's inventors, that are crazy about their own ideas and, and are willing to, to spend their energy uh, and the, the money they have uh, to, uh, to, to, to work on, on their own projects. Uh, sometimes capitalists, who are also, each one of them has a different view of uh, what the market is going to be, investing in those firms individually, in different investors, each one of them putting their money or, or, or making their bets on specific technologies, and at the end, the market uh, selecting among all those alternatives that are offered, the market says, yeah, I like that best. So, uh, in fact, uh, the, w what happened uh, with uh, Ford was that it was chosen by, by, by the market and, and it's not a random choice, right? It's a, uh, uh, Ford's car was chosen because it was the, let's say, what, what, uh, Ford was one of the companies that chose gasoline, uh, we don't know what were the, the assumptions that led Ford to, to choose that? Maybe he was, uh, you know, he had the, the, this insight that look, people, uh, may, maybe at the beginning, and, and, and we have to transport ourselves to the early 1900s when uh, people did not live in a, uh, in a rush like we do. Right? So maybe for some of those who were developing a steam engine car, they didn't think that it would be a problem if people had to turn their, their cars on let's say half an hour or an hour before they, they wish to, to drive. Maybe they were thinking, well, people are going to use cars not to, you know, to drive from where they live until the, or to, a, to, a, to, to the market or whatever, something that is 500 meters away. At that time, they would say people will walk that distance or they will ride their horses. People may wish to, to drive their cars if they're going to take a road, for example. Right? Maybe that, that was on, on the mind of someone who was uh, thinking of a, a, a steam engine car. If we only drove our cars for a, a trip that we do not do very often, maybe we, we can plan ahead and, and decide, I'll, I'll turn the technology on and I'll, I'll come back in, in half an hour or so, and then I'll, I'll do the long rides, the long drive, and then when I get there, 
it's time to turn it off again and maybe they do it another day or turn it on again. So people didn't even know uh, how people would be using uh, cars. So at the beginning, uh, maybe some, some and, and this is one of the, the, the characteristics of, of the innovator. The innovator is someone who, who can picture the future and think uh, how a specific uh, technology is going to be used. But again, innovators, some of them are, are right and some are wrong. And, and Suroviaki here claims that we need, uh, for, for radical new innovations, we need a lot of different attempts, each one of them biased in one way, uh, Hopefully, with not a lot of, uh, of a shared knowledge or shared information among them, because if, when you start having a lot of shared knowledge or, or, or shared information, uh, you, you, you start not having that many uh, new ideas, right? Because people are going to start mimicking what others are doing and they say, oh, that's a clever idea, I will copy that. When you copy someone else, you're not creating something radically different. So there's some time in the, in the introduction of a new technology or, or, or a new product or whatever, where you need to be revolutionary. And to be re revolutionary, what, uh, uh, one way of doing that is, well, you cannot afford trying all, or, you know, having all different uh, possibilities um, uh, developed or, or tried within, a, within an organization, right? It will happen in the market and, and then the market will select the winners. So Ford was selected for the cheap car, but looking Backwards, it's much easier to, 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 to understand it because he was able, well, his company was able to produce a cheap car, and to produce a cheap car, he had introduced another huge innovation that was the assembly line uh, with uh, the, let's say the moving assembly line where uh, the the workers remained where they were, and the the, the items that were being built or, or uh, were pushed on a on top of a of a, a tray or something. That was uh, so, so. Ford's innovation was more possibly more in the process than in the car itself. Although his company was also very, uh, very innovative in the sense that they said at that stage, what would win the market was the company producing one single uh, model of cars. He says this is a new, 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 new product. People still don't even know exactly what it, what a car is. We will not be uh, uh, spending our money and our energy in developing a lot of different prototypes. We'll, we'll, we'll think of one, of one specific uh, model and then we'll think of the best way of producing it so that it's cheap to produce and at the end everyone will have the same car. And then we got to that slogan that we laugh about today because uh, it doesn't fit our times but it was what made Ford so successful in the past. You can have, talking to the customer, you can have the car you wish uh, except that it, it, it's going to be a Model T black. Right? You can't choose the color, you can't choose the model. That's, you know, if you want a car, that's going to be what you're going to get. Uh, simply because that made the car cheap and easy uh, to, to manufacture. Uh, but again, uh, was Ford the cleverest uh, car builder? Probably not. Uh, he, he may have been lucky to, to have uh, had uh, ideas that were well tuned with. Uh, with uh, the markets and with uh, the infrastructure available and so on and so forth. If you think of, uh, uh, well, the, the author doesn't talk about um, about Apple. Uh, he could have because it's, it's a much more recent uh, example. But if we think about uh, Apple, uh, again, what, what did Steve Jobs do to that, to, 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 to the microcomputer? Uh, Steve Jobs was an innovator that understood uh, or, or that looked at the customers and said, what, what do the customers need? What do the customers want? They, uh, at, at a time that uh, the computers were being made for, you know, hobbyists, in, uh, people that liked electronics and that wanted to assemble, sort of assemble their own uh, kits of a, a computer, um, uh, Steve Jobs thought, well, this can be a product for the, for the crowds. But I have to think of uh, something that the, a crowd that is not a crowd of knowledgeable electronics engineers. It's going to be a, a crowd, a crowd of uh, people who are ignorant about uh, electronics and just want a, a box that you, you press a button or something and, and things start operating. Uh, many people had to be, be, before uh, he got to this conclusion. May, may, many people tried uh, different ways of introducing the the microcomputer to to uh, let's say large crowds. But, uh, but he was successful because he understood that he was not even the, the inventor. The inventor of, of Apple's uh, original models was another Steve, uh, Steve uh, Wozniak. Um, 
who was, who was not a, a, an innovator, who was just an engineer. And then he needed uh, Steve Jobs, let's say, understanding of the, the, the market to make sure that when that product was out there, the crowds would select, would pick it, and not would, and choose choose it, and not choose, let's say, other alternatives that were available. So, uh, the collective intelligence here is uh, based on the same principles as uh, had been presented in previous uh, chapters. Uh, what um, what uh, Surviak uh, claims here is that the collective intelligence results as a selection of the best ideas among a lot of individual ideas that are independent among themselves. So all, everything that appeared in, the, in the, the first chapter remains valid here. No mimicking, no copy, uh, each one trying, believing on a different thing, developing it to, to, to a stance that now uh, uh, the crowds uh, can uh, um, assess or evaluate. So it's a crowd, it's a, the crowd can, can work in a crowd evaluation process and deciding this is the winner, that one is the loser. Um, so, uh, he, he, uh, Sroviecki claims that he, uh, this model of innovation and diffusion of an innovation is pretty similar to what happens in a, uh, in a honey bee hive. Right? Honey bees uh, do not actually know, and, and maybe that also happens with ants. Maybe you, you figure out how, 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 how can ants so quickly find, you know, some uh, foods that we left behind, or uh, do they have a, you know, a perfect sense of smell, or no? It's simply that they they go out randomly uh, in different directions, and one of them will be successful. One of them is going to be the Harry Ford that will get to, to the to the to the right solution to the, the right place, and then it will come back and inf inform the others. In fact, uh, uh, the author here uh, talks more about bees, and he says uh, the the. the well, bees will, are going to spread uh, during the day, looking for nectar, uh, and then those that find uh, flowers that are provide more nectar, they, 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 find, they, they find these resources, resources in a more, let's say, more abundant way. They come back to the, the hive and they communicate it to the others, and, and then uh, soon you have uh, a, a lot more uh, bees going to the, in that, to the same spot and, and, and collecting that, that same uh, nectar from that same uh, source. Uh, so. We need uh, the individuals to, let's say, to uncover the alternatives that we have. Right? Uh, and this, this is something that did not show in the first chapter. In the first chapter, we were doing, just doing polls, or, or he, the author was discussing the possibility of using polls or, or using the, the crowds to decide among different alternatives, but those alternatives were already given. Now, uh, he's showing us that the crowd can also be used to develop the alternatives before, before it's used to, to assess those alternatives and to choose among them. Right? This maybe is, a, is, is what, what is new here. Uh, uh, crowds being used to uncover the alternatives and then after that deciding uh, among those alternatives which one is, is the best. So when we say crowds uncovering alternatives, is uh, individuals in the crowd, each one of them, uh, bringing information or, or, develop, or developing products, like uh, in the case of the automobile, uh, that will later uh, be assessed by, by uh, another crowd. Uh, what is important in, those, in, in, the, uh, uh, in this crowd that will um, well, not only uncover alternatives, because it, sometimes it, it means developing alternatives, right? Uh, if we want alternatives to be diverse, we need diversity among those creating the alternatives. Right? This is again uh, one of the main reasons my, uh, I understand that nowadays organizations are so focused on diversity. It's not a, an ethical thing. Of course, it is, it, 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 it is aligned with the ethics of our times, right? where we think of uh, providing everyone with, uh, with, with equivalent opportunities and, and, and having a fairer society. But in fact, what is behind that is that uh, Diversity brings, also brings uh, um, um, the possibility of ge first generating different uh, alternatives um, from, from which we will choose afterwards. So diversity provides us with uh, uh, different perspectives. Uh, so, and this diversity, uh, of course, in, in our society we're all, all the time talking about diversity uh, of uh, color, gender, and so on and so forth. 
But it's, uh, uh, the diversity that, that really matters is cognitive diversity, people that think different. Of course, when we, we talk about those differences, uh, when, when organizations try to, to hire uh, people from, from diverse uh, races, for example, uh, uh, they, they also want to, to bring in the, the different cognitions of those, you know, the different uh, cultures or that, may, uh, that may exist among those uh, people. Uh, Brazil has, has, been a, a, has been a place where uh, a lot of creativity happens because we are one of those countries, and, and this also happens with uh, the United States, uh, countries of immigration, uh, where we had people from very different cultures that uh, uh, when they arrived here, at the beginning they had to live together, but at the same time, each one of them bringing uh, characteristics uh, or, or ideas uh, or customs, uh, a culture that was their own. Uh, and when they, when, 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 when all those different perspectives are, are brought together, this allows for, um, for, for the collective to pick good ideas uh, from, from different, uh, you know, from, from different settings, let's say. Um, so we, we, we want to have diversity of uh, con uh, conceptual and cognitive sense, but another important thing is we want to have diversity of uh, capital sources. Money resources, right? Uh, why so? If you only have, I mean, and this is where I personally do not agree in these ideas of choosing, uh, uh, of centrally choosing uh, the winners, let's say. The, 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 and centrally choosing, I mean, governments deciding which sectors are, should be emphasized, right? Let the crowds decide that, right? Uh, and, and do that in a way that money is brought uh, to sponsor different ideas by those who believe on those ideas. Of course, many of them will fail later. This is in fact the principle of the startup uh, ecosystem in, the, in, in California. Right? When, I, when I was there in 2018, 2019, uh, I was very involved with uh, a group that was studying the startup uh, ecosystem there. Because of course, that's, let's say that's, that's the place in the world where, if you think of a place where startups uh, have a, a great chance of getting funded, it's, it's California, it's the Silicon Valley and, and, and that area, the, the, the San Francisco Bay Area, as they call it. Um, and what happens there, why so many um, uh, entrepreneurs from all over the world decide to go to California, one of the most expensive places to live, uh, and, and many times live in, in very primitive conditions while they are, they're trying to convince some capitalist to uh, provide them with some money so that they can experiment with their, with their idea and they can try and bring it to a, to, to a stage where it is shown to a crowd and the crowd can then decide if it's a good product or not. But in California, uh, their idea is that it's, it's not a problem to fail. In fact, most of the startups that are sponsored by the, let's say, those, these investors of the, the Silicon Valley, those investors already know out of a hundred, maybe only a couple are going to survive. All of the others are going to fail. But even those that fail, uh, well, first, they, they fail developing technology that will be, some of them will be selected later uh, as, as good technology. Uh, uh, well, they fail because, let's say, their technologies were not selected by the crowd, right? But at the same time, they generate technology that may be assimilated later by other companies. And, and besides that, they, they help build a, a crowd of innovators, or, uh, or innovators to be, in the sense that uh, uh, what, what I'm trying to, to, to say here is that uh, for example, when you are, if, if you are, if, if you want to start uh, start a company, and you have already failed three other companies in California, they will say, "Great, you are in a much better uh, stage to start a new business than someone than someone who started a business for the first time. You already know three ways of not doing it, right? So you're experienced. Uh, they don't think of uh, someone who has failed as a failure, in the sense that uh, that entrepreneur." Uh, is very risky to, to find. In fact, they think, well, if you have already failed, uh, you and you're still insisting on, and you have a, a new a new idea, and of course, and we we understand that idea and we, we like it, we will invest on, on your company because we know that you don't want to fail, at least not fail the same way you, you failed the other time, right? You're you're exper you're more experienced. Uh, being, let's say, a startup uh, owner or uh, is something that uh, you, you need different kinds of skills for someone to start a business from scratch then you need from an administrator, for example, right? Uh, and, and, and they, they think, oh, you're an experienced person on that. That's something that will, let's say, you'll get some points on their assessment for that. 
Of course, they will also look at your idea and see if the, the idea makes sense. And here again, we need diversity of money sources because different investors will be enthusiastic about different ideas. And the crowd will select them later on, right? So this, uh, this, this is an explanation why there are so many clever ideas coming out of California. It's not because the, the let's say, the, the people that live there are smarter than we are. In fact, most of those companies, when you go and try to trace who the, the, the owners were, the, the, the original, the, 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 the ones, that the, the, not, not only the inventors, the, the, the scientists or whatever, you, you're going to see that there are people from all over the world that went to California because they had this wish to, to turn their technology into uh, a, 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 an innovative product uh, and knew that there they would get the kind of sponsorship that uh, it would be hard to get somewhere else. Um, so, uh, the author claims, uh, of course, that large groups tend to be more diverse cogn cognitively than small groups. Of course, the author wrote this in 2005 when we had not still experienced the extreme to which uh, our echo chambers generated in, in social networks, for example, electronic social networks, can make even large crowds think the same. So nowadays we, we, we do have large crowds, uh, li large crowds, uh, uh, group thinking, right? And, 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 and therefore thinking that, 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 that what they're doing is great because they've got a consensus. It's not a, it's, 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 in this case, it's not a consensus that is built. It's a consensus that is pre-selected. You, you are part of that group because you already thought the same way as someone else. And then you see, well, there's this large group of people who think this, the, the same. So it means that we are probably right, right? It's, uh, there's no one challenging our ideas, but, but they, uh, what happens these days in these echo chambers is that people that have lived outside echo chambers in the past and, and, and knew that there was conflict, now when they get us to, a, to, a, to, a, to a, an environment where there's no conflict, they think, wow, this is, a, this is an absolute truth. Everyone thinks like that. And then when they eventually get in contact with someone who challenges that, they say, this person has to be crazy because, you know, how can it be if we, you know, if they're, they're, look, look at the size of this group. No one else is challenging this. Why is this stupid person doing it? That person must be wrong. So, and, and that's when you cancel the thinking. Then that's that's where you cancel the possibility of uh, becoming smarter or more intelligent in terms of learning or developing knowledge. So this is a phenomenon that we we have to understand. And at some stage, a few years ago, I started thinking if we should still call this this uh, class here just collective intelligence or if we should uh, call it collective intelligence dash stupidity. Because the phenomenon is, is, is I, mean, I mean, you build uh, intelligence and stupidity out of the same sources, people. Except that for, for, for intelligence to be built, we need, uh, from the crowds, we need independence. Uh, what else do, do, do we need that we, we saw in the, in the, the previous class, uh, the, the author, author says independence, uh, no bias or, or, or no, let's say, the population shouldn't be biased towards, uh, to, towards one specific end, which means everyone individually, we, we, we can and we will be biased. But collectively, uh, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't have a bias. And, and this is, unfortunately, uh, th this bias happens in, in our electronic social networks by design. There is, it's not that they're designed to, to, to cause bias, but they're designed to, to cause unity, to, to bring people together, to connect a group. So they end up connecting people because of their similarities and, and, uh, and questioning any, any differences that may exist. Um, so when we're talking about large groups, uh, let's say outside echo chambers, right, uh, we do not have to concern so much about, uh, about uh, the possibility of uh, biases because those biases will cancel out. But when we're talking about small groups, and those are, let's say, when we think of, of the organizations where we work, think of a, a, a department at a, a, at a university or uh, a sector or a department in a, in a company, um, we have to be, be careful when we try to explore the, the potential of the wisdom of crowds because those small groups tend to be biased towards a specific uh, kind of cognitive uh, uh, development. For example, 
for, and I noticed this very distinctively here, for example, between the computer, uh, uh, applied computing department, where uh, I, I work most of the time, and the business departments, uh, with which I, I also have a strong relationship. It's two different crowds. If we go to the engineering department, it's going to be again, it's people think uh, very much more similarly among themselves than they do. And, and, and then, of course, if I go to a, a sociology department, it's going to be uh, different again. Uh, so in an organization, we have to, to take uh, care when we are selecting. And, and each time we have more teams working on performing tasks, we have to, 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 to be careful of how to selectively uh, choose who's going to participate in a team if that team needs to, to, to be creative, let's say, and, and to, to create alternatives, right? If the, and, and even if that team is there to decide among alternatives. Of course, after alternatives have been created and deci decided on, so it's just a matter of now, just, as, as we say, just do it, right? If it's just do it, then you can select a very homogeneous group of people that are good at doing that, right? Uh, so uh, what I'm uh, trying to say here is that uh, homogeneous groups may do what they have to do very well. Homogeneous groups may have been selected because they can exploit that situation very, very well. In English, there's a difference between exploit and explore, right? I'm not sure if this is very clear to all of you, but in Portuguese, we only have the word explorar uh, for both meanings. It's, it's, it's a pity that we don't have uh, a, a verb like explotar. Sometimes you see people writing that now, but it's, it's, and, uh, it's just they, they bring it directly from, from English. But explore, in Portuguese, let's say in English, they have explore and exploit, right? Uh, uh, explore. Explore is, is investigate. You explore with an open mind. There's alternatives. We're going to explore the possibilities. After you've chosen one, you exploit that. You you get all uh, all value. You, you drain the value from it, right? So homogeneous groups may be very good uh, to exploit something, to drain value out of uh, something. Because uh, let's say you may get the if, it, if it's to manufacture products, you may get. The people that have the most, if, if, it, and, and if, it's a, if it's still a, a process that needs manual skills, you may select people that are very good at those very specific manual skills that are required there. And you only choose people that have those manual skills and, and you don't want other skills, you don't want th those people thinking of anything different. Right? So you may have, uh, uh, after, after you have explored the alternatives and decided on, on something, then you may have very ho a very homogeneous team to, to, do, to, to, to exploit. But when, when you're conceptualizing a new product, thinking of a product for the future, when even when you're designing a new product, uh, trying to, which is already a little more focused, but still, even in the design process, you're still trying to think out of the box a little bit. And, uh, for those activities, you need to have people with very dif uh, uh, different cognitive uh, perspectives, or uh, if you want to explore uh, the, all, all, the poten uh, all, all the potential, all the possibilities. Um, and uh, we don't see that usually happening, right? People, uh, companies select people because they are individually smart. They try to get a smart team. But what they, they, they call a smart team is actually a, a group of smart people. And if they get those uh, smart people all based on the same way of selecting smart people, they are smart on a specific sense. So they, they are either all too theoretical, but based on a, a specific perspective. If it's an engineering firm, they, they, they may all be very good engineers in the sense, the, uh, sense, sense of uh, solving problems that have already been posed. Uh, uh, but sometimes you need someone with a different kind of smartness. Right? You need someone that will question the, the, those design, um, let's say, characteristics that the engineer is bringing to the product simply because it's easier for him or her to, to develop that product based on that. You know, creating that kind of, uh, of, which will end up being a limitation, right? Uh, uh, so it's good to have uh, people that help you explore possibilities. So uh, homogeneous groups are definitely not uh, a good way to start when you, when you, when you're thinking about uh, new things to be done. So uh, homogeneous groups again are good for efficiency. Uh, 
diverse groups are good for uh, effectiveness, right? Um, homogeneous groups do something right because they have already been selected to exploit. Um, diverse groups may think of the right thing to do because they bring each one of those members of the group bring a different perspective, and based on that different perspective, uh, you you can uh, if even change it or reformulate the design that you're trying to to have for, for a specific product. Um, smaller groups also uh, have a larger risk of group thinking. I've already mentioned the Bay of Pigs, uh, but there are many many other uh, situations in which uh, small groups decide on a way that uh, even a small small child could say, if I if, if I had a saying there, I would say I would ask something or that would make those people think differently. Um, so. Um, what happens is uh, that, that, uh, that in a situation where we where uh, there is group group thinking happening uh, is that we we close our idea uh, our ideas very quickly with respect to a to a specific pr uh, product or or, or concept uh, and we we we, can't, we we don't explore other alternatives. Um, usually, though, in, in, in these situations, uh, instead of uh, people opening their minds, you end up having them narrow-minded, becoming more narrow-minded. Think of, again, the echo chambers that we generate in, in our social networks with respect to anything, uh, politics, religion, uh, but it could also be uh, uh, things that we, we enjoy, right? I, 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 for example, there was a time, nowadays I haven't been playing much, but I started playing the harmonica, uh, and the only thing I saw on, on the social networks were other people that played harmonica, right? Well, people that actually played, because I only tried to play, but anyway. Uh, and, uh, and so you, you end up becoming part of groups that are very small and, and, and that tend to be biased towards specific uh, ideas um, uh, based on that. Um, and uh, so uh, we have to think that diversity helps us to prevent, uh, sorry, to preserve the independence of the, of the individuals because uh, diversity leads people to question things. Um, by the way, one, one of the experiments that the that Suroviaki mentions here, I don't recall exactly in which a chapter, uh, is one in which um, the, let's say the, the researcher has two, two urns uh, full of uh, marbles, uh, black and white marbles, uh, just that in one of the, the, the urns, uh, let's say there's twice as many black marbles than, than than white marbles, and the second one, there's uh, twice as many white marbles as there are black marbles, right? Uh, and then, well, uh, the, the, the researcher who's, who's experimenting with uh, people's, let's say, intelligence there, uh, asks each one of them to take, uh, take uh, one, let's say, one marble from, from one of, of, of the two urns, and then based on the color of that, that marble, well, well and, and not, not based on their own rationality, decide is that the, 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 the urn that has uh, more black or more white marbles. Right? And then of course what happens that individually, if I go there and pick a white marble out of uh, one of those urns, I will, I, I, I tend, if I have to risk, I'll, I'll tend to say that they, this is the one that has two white marbles for each uh, black marble, right? There's, chances are that I, I have uh, chosen that uh, marble from, from that urn. Uh, and then comes, uh, if another person comes and takes another marble from, from that, that same uh, urn uh, and gets a, a black uh, marble, this person is going to say, I believe that this is the one that has more black marbles. So uh, what is it that we want to amplify, let's say, in a, in a decision process? The individual um, capacity of, or the, the, in, the individual chance of being right or the collective chance of being right? Well, if, if you're thinking of, uh, Let's say what is good for us. Let's say let's say that the result was uh, was uh, the intent was getting the the best result for, for for an organization. You would say we want the collective. But the incentives that we give when people say individually say, well, I got a, a white marble, so I believe that this is the, the, the this urn here is the one where there are more white marbles. Uh, that uh, may uh, when everyone has has had a chance of saying uh, what they had, the the and, and if the if then the, the, the let's say the, the, 
the, the, whole, the, the, the whole part, the number of participants has to, to, to have a say. Uh, uh, it's probably they, they will they would they would have a, a better results if uh, people instead of uh, of uh, risking saying you know what what that what, what they believe that that urn has more if they just said I got a white marble or I got a black marble because at the end you could say well although some people would think that uh, they, they they were they had chosen earn A or earn B, depending on, on the percentage of uh, the probability of, of, of getting a marble out of there. Uh, at the end, you would see, well, but 10 people got marbles from here, and we only got three black marbles and seven white marbles. Right? So now we collectively can say, well, it's probably, this is, uh, this is the, the, the one that has more white marbles. But if we, if, if we have to decide based on each person's individual uh, uh, opinion uh, of what that, uh, um, of, 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 of what's, uh, what was the content of that, uh, um, that, that urn, uh, it would uh, defer because after a while, if, even if, let's say, if you were the third or fourth person to, to, to get a marble and you already knew what others had uh, gotten before, you would say, although I got a, a white marble, but look, the other two people that came first, they said that they got black marbles. So, I think that in this case, I think that this is probably the, the urn that has more, uh, more black uh, marbles. Can you see? Can you see the 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 the, the information cascading, uh, uh, changing your opinion? You say, well, regardless of what I got, because of, of, of the, the the marbles that the others got before, I have a different uh, uh, different saying. So I am being biased. I'm, I'm being influenced. I'm not I'm not being independent in my own uh, decision making, and therefore. The, the decision that can be taken out of the collective is also not going to be uh, as good as it, it would if I simply said, well, I got a, a, a white marble. Not, I think that this, uh, that this urn is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, is the one that has more white or black marbles. Anyway, uh, I think I was a little more confusing than, than, than the author was when he explained that. But basically, again, preserving the independence of each decision maker allows us to then uh, assess the decisions of each one of those individuals and collectively uh, get a result that is, is probably more solid than, than otherwise. Um, then we also have uh, uh, some uh, uh, discussion on, we, we had already talked about that in the, the previous class, the, the, the circular mill, which is uh, when ants start marching in circles simply because they're following uh, the pheromone of uh, other ants that had been there before, and they will be doing that forever instead of going back to the, let's say, to their, to their nest, simply because uh, they, they are group thinking, right? They're, they're, instead of, uh, if, if there was a, a radical individual after a while, they would say, look, I will, I will I'll do what, what they usually do. I will, let's disperse, and then when, after dispersing, we come back and we say, well, I found food there, and then and then we do the track, right? And then we have a track between the place where the food is and, and, and the nest, right? But, but at, at, some, at some point you have to, to have rebels. Uh, and in fact, rebels here would be people that will, or, or individuals that will be deciding independently. Uh, if they are all deciding collectively, then it became group thinking, right? That those, all those ants are very confident that they're going to the right place because they see that there's a lot of other ants have passed that way before, but they just don't realize that they're they are uh, going in circles. Um, another problem uh, of uh, us being influenced by others is what we call social proof, right? uh, which is uh, similar to the hair effect. Right? You, if you see if so many are going that way, that, that may be right. Uh, the experiments that uh, Sroviecki relates uh, or talks about in the, in the, the book is one in which he calls, let's say, 10 people to participate in an, in an experiment. Uh, and in that experiment, he shows two different lines uh, and asks uh, people, people one by one to say if they're the same size or not. And then he shows there a, a first uh, set of two, two lines, and the first person says, same size. And, and, and they're all the same size. Then another set, and then suddenly there's a, a second or third uh, example that he gives. And one is clearly smaller. But the first person who gets there says same size. Of course, that person is in agreement with the with the researcher, right? They they had a, they had a, uh, they, they agreed that the person would lie, 
And then a second person who's also there to lie says, same size. And then the third person who's, who's an, the actual participant of the, the research says, gee, he starts, let me look from here, let me look from here. Because other two people already say that the same size. To me, they, they don't seem to be the same size, but, and then a the person goes there and says, same size. There is this uh, 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 feeling that you must be, the same thing as, as what happened at the, the Bay of Pigs, right? Where if everyone thinks that that's obviously unanimous, how will I dare challenge? And then the, 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 the researcher does the, the same experiment again, but instead of having, you know, several people saying same size, same size, same size, it, it does have a lot of people saying that, and all of them are in agreement with the researcher, so let's say not, let's say for, fake, fake participants, but uh, those, uh, those uh, but, but then uh, the researcher includes there someone else who will also say, I think that one, one of the lines is a little shorter. That is, that's the trigger for the other person to say, yeah, I also have that impression. So no, you do not have, you, don't, you, you do not, the, the problem is you, you shouldn't have absolute consensus. If you have a, a, you know, a little, if you have, if you have a, just a little possibility of challenging the consensus, that will already show that there is diversity and that, that will allow a group to explore um, uh, its, its differences, its, its different perspectives. Right, it's, it's interesting, you do not need, I mean, even if you had five or six people saying they're, they're the same size, and then someone goes there and says, no, they're not the same size, then, then the, the person who was already going to agree with the others simply because he or she thought, well, I may be mistaken, but I, I, I prefer to conform with the majority, is going to say, I also think that this is, they're not the same size, and, and in, in that case, generates a debate that may help the group get out of their group thinking or their consensus or preconceived consensus. Uh, do you understand what, what, what those uh, the, the 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 author mentions in the text that, that uh, at some stage uh, cities in the in the U.S. started uh, building uh, plank roads? Do you know what those are? Do you know what a plank road is? Let me let me see if I find here just to show if for those who do not have the curiosity of uh, of checking it. Let me just try and Google here. Plank road, uh, plank road, and what I'll do is let me see if I find images. Okay, this this is what a plank road is. Uh, I can get bigger here. There were plenty of plank roads at the the 30s and 40s in, in Canada and in the United States also. Of course, this was before we had asphalt and, and so instead of having a, a, a and, and concrete and things like that, instead of having a dirty road, many small cities started building roads of uh, timber, of uh, wood. Right? Uh, of course, that needed some investment, uh, heavy investment, right, to make, to make a, a full road of, of wood uh, involved uh, some investment. But there was one guy who did it uh, and and, and it, it got a lot of uh, so, so and, and, and this was usually done by private uh, initiative, uh, and they would uh, probably pay a, a toll to, to to drive on those roads. So there was one one, one first uh, initiative, and it was successful. Uh, a second one then uh, was started. It was also su successful. Suddenly, a lot of uh, different um, uh, entrepreneurs and investors are putting their energy and their money into building plank roads. Uh, to, to, to connect cities to other cities uh, in, in, in the States. And, but that was, uh, even the first projects were, were made based on the assumption that one of these plank roads would last at least eight years before it had to be, uh, or they, they, they needed to, to spend a lot of money on maintenance. And it turned out that uh, it only lasted three or four years. So, but during those first three or four years, right, uh, a lot of other people decided to do the same thing and they did it because uh, of um, of uh, a phenomenon that, that, that we that we call uh, information cascades, right? A first uh, a business was successful doing that. A second was successful. A third was successful. And then after that, people believed that it was successful without reflecting too much. Maybe if if others had to start from scratch, they would say, how, how, how long will this last? And maybe they got to, to a different forecast than those those. Uh, the first innovators. They would say, well, maybe this will last only three or four years. 
then it's not going to be worth spending money uh, on this because we will not get it paid back for our investment. It turned out that most of these uh, roads were abandoned after you know, a few years uh, simply because they were a bad idea, but a bad idea that got a lot of traction because some people had already done and then, and then a new entrepreneur saw, well, if it worked for them, it will work for me as well. Part of that, uh, this uh, effect of uh, herd effects in which uh, you're not getting the wisdom of crowds, you're, you're, you're getting a problematic decision made, assuming that a crowd has already decided that before. When in fact it was not a crowd decision, it was just several individual decisions in sequence and each one of them reinforcing the previous one. All right, um, well, it's, uh, it's 9.30. Uh, I was thinking, I, I don't know if, if, if you have uh, questions up to this point here, otherwise, uh, I would say, and of course, we, we've covered uh, chapters two, three, and maybe four here. Uh, I haven't gone all the way through, but again, uh, I, I do believe that we get more from our collective intelligence than uh, me just repeating things that you have already read. So my idea would be that we, uh, we make a, a, a short break, maybe uh, from, from now until 9.50 or so, uh, and then we, we start working on, on our forum in Moodle. I don't know, uh, unless you, you have any questions about this, uh, the things that we have, that I have just presented here, or, and, and then we can uh, also uh, work on, on, on the ideas of the, the, the other chapters also, because otherwise, uh, I, I mean, I realize that I, I'll take the whole, the whole time we have just to lecture about something that you have already read. Hopefully I introduced some new uh, ideas here, but, but basically what, what I try to do is sort of revive uh, or, or think of, of things that sort of Yaki had. Mm -hmm.